from the Cube Studios in Palo Alto and Boston, bringing you data-driven insights from the Cube and ETR. This is Breaking Analysis with Dave Vellante. Conventional wisdom says Microsoft is a big winner in the recent OpenAI saga. We don't quite see it that way. Both Microsoft and OpenAI are in a worse position today than they were last Thursday prior to the firing of OpenAI CEO Sam Altman and subsequent ongoing public drama that ensued. Microsoft and OpenAI had a huge lead in market momentum, AI adoption, feature acceleration, and they were setting the narrative in AI. Our discussions with customers and industry insiders leads us to conclude that the duo has put its substantial lead at risk. Now, while Satya Nadella is making lemonade from lemons, the window just cracked open for the competition and it's more clear than ever that one large language model will not rule them all. Hello and welcome to this special episode of the Cube Research Insights powered by ETR. In this breaking analysis, we weigh in on the impacts of the OpenAI debacle with a deeper look at customer perspectives and how it alters the competitive landscape in the battle for AI su supremacy. As well, the amazing data team at ETR has run a quick survey of OpenAI and Microsoft customers to gauge reactions, and we'll share that fresh data in addition to some other tidbits. Now, before we get into that, so much has been reported on this rapidly evolving story. It changes by the hour, it seems, but it's worth reviewing the strange and curious structure that OpenAI has in place, which has led to a breakdown in communications, a governance failure, an absolute PR disaster. OpenAI, was formed as a nonprofit in late 2015 with the commendable objective of building safe and artificial intelligence for the benefit of humanity. You know, often governments would be funding this type of initiative, but seeing no obvious public path, a number of private industry players decided that a 501c3 would best serve the mission. But it became clear that despite the initial billion dollar funding from its founders and some other insiders, that the company wouldn't be able to adequately fund its lofty goals. So in 2019, OpenAI created a structure that allowed it to accelerate its outside investments, including from longtime partner Microsoft, which began partnering with OpenAI back in 2016. As shown in this graphic, the structure expanded to include a limited liability corporation that appears to have some type of operational role today. It's owned by the nonprofit which also owns a separate holding company that enabled OpenAI to take outside investments. The big investor names you might be familiar with are Coastal Ventures, Tiger Global, Thrive Capital, Sequoia Capital, and A16Z. OpenAI took around a billion dollars from Microsoft around this time, but it's unclear if that investment, <clears throat> which is in the, the, the middle box as shown here, the holding company on this graphic, or the one at the bottom, that, that the cap profit company in which Microsoft has a 49% stake. So it's unclear where the billion is, it doesn't really matter. So they've got a 49% stake in that bottom structure. So unpacking the structure a little bit more, it's likely that the holding company creates a fence and fences off certain assets like, for example, the artificial general intelligence, the AGI intellectual property and capital, which as you probably know, Microsoft does not have access to. That was, that was carved out of their deal. So Microsoft's 49% ownership of the capped profit company is in exchange for up to $13 billion in cash and in-kind contributions, e.g. Azure. And in my conversations with insiders, it's based on OpenAI delivering on certain milestones. So it's our understanding that Microsoft has the right to make derivative works from OpenAI IP, for example, bundling it with Bing and its other products, and potentially more liberal IP usage. So you end up with this complicated structure that has investors which have rights to all the IP, including the AGI IP, and one giant inv investor, Microsoft, that doesn't have access to that, uh, that AGI IP and shares the cap profit LLC with a 51% who has a 51% ownership the 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 open AI side that's the holding company which is shown here and it includes those investors mentioned and reportedly this structure had a 90 billion dollar valuation which is all at risk now 
the point is this structure has failed in a number of ways. Microsoft capitulated on having a say, a board seat and a say in how OpenAI is governed and or just ignored the risks in exchange for exclusive access to OpenAI's GPT 3.5 and 4 technologies. And that left the door open for a board of directors with incredibly poor judgment to try and oust its CEO, leading to a company that is now in disarray. And the post by co-founder Ilya Sutskever says it all. It says, I deeply regret my participation in the board's action. I never intended to harm OpenAI. I love everything we built together, and I will do everything I can to reunite the company. Unbelievable. As one person commented on, in Twitter, this turns Ilya from Barzini into Fredo, which is a reference to the movie The Godfather. Emilio Barzini, of course, was the mobster who double-crossed the Corleone family, and Fredo was the sensitive and troubled son of Don Corleone, who was the unsuspecting dupe in the drama. And it's unlikely, however, that Ilya's fate is going to mirror Fredo's. He took a bullet in the back of the head, for those of you who don't know. Let, okay, let's explore why this mess is so damaging and provide some context as to why the narrative that Microsoft is the big winner is dubious in our view. Essentially, and, and by the way, nuanced. So essentially, the commercial face of OpenAI is Microsoft, and the two companies are joined at the hip. In other words, adoption of OpenAI tools directly benefits Microsoft because they are the exclusive partner for OpenAI's GP2 tooling. The success of OpenAI has been astounding. This data from ETR's Emerging Technology Survey, ETS, of more than 1,500 IT decision makers, ITDMs we call them, evaluates their use of technologies from non-public companies. This is the Gen AI component of that survey. So in this survey, ETR measures net sentiment, that's the blue line, and mind share, that's the yellow line. OpenAI showed up in the February 23 survey for the first time has steadily increased on both dimensions to levels that we've not seen previously. The green and blue bars are indicators of incremental adoption, and the gray and red are indicators of no adoption. And the trend is clear. OpenAI, its steady progression is very obvious. But what is striking is when you put this in context relative to the competition. Again, this is non-public companies and excludes the big three cloud players. But this chart shows data on the same two dimensions, net sentiment and mind share amongst the Gen I players. Look at the position of open AI. It is off the charts on both dimensions, blowing away the lights of, likes of Anthropic and Cohere, two prominent and well-funded LLM players who have raised collectively well over $3 billion. OpenAI's dominant position is directly a function of its Microsoft relationship and that company's massive resources, its software estate, and its cloud computing infrastructure, aka Azure. The gap between OpenAI and the rest of the pack, as you saw in that previous slide, is enormous. And the reason this mess is so concerning for customers is the top challenges that they report in putting Gen AI into production are concerns related to all the sticky wicket legal and compliance issues <laughs> shown in this survey. Privacy, security, legal compliance, regulatory concerns, and lack of accuracy and unexpected results, i.e. hallucinations. These issues, as shown by the arrows, the red arrows, dominate the barriers to adoption. Now, coming off an impressive Ignite conference, Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella spent his weekend trying to save the day. And he spent this week doing damage control. Here's what he said to Kara Swisher, quote, one thing I'll be very, very, very clear about is we're never going to get back into a situation where we get surprised like this ever again. That's done. So look, this raises a credibility issue for Microsoft. If you're a customer, you're going to take a pause and question this disaster. If Microsoft essentially ignored the governance risks on a potentially $13 billion investment, and OpenAI has a completely dysfunctional board and structure, would you trust them with your data and potentially the future technology roadmap of your company? You most certainly wouldn't trust OpenAI. Whether Microsoft can adequately address customer concerns remains to be seen. So who wins and who loses from this failure of the OpenAI board? All the folks chasing OpenAI and Microsoft just got a little reprieve. AWS is readying 
uh, to have the last word at reInvent next week. Google playing catch up with Vertex AI. Anthropic is now going to get a stress test from its investors. And if it passes, well, they're, they're good. Tesla, IBM with Granite, Meta with Llama 2, other open source models, other companies in the mix like Oracle, Salesforce, Mark Benioff put out a tweet saying, I'll hire all, all, all everybody, all the open AI you know, rock stars and give you the same, same compensation. Dell and HP trying to bring Gen AI to sort of a hybrid model, on-prem and hybrid. NVIDIA and other chip manufacturers, they want a level customer playing field. They don't want one company to completely dominate. So they went, and all the AI talent hounds, you know, as they say, Benioff offering jobs. And generally, the AI crowd that wants to decelerate the pace of AI. These names stand to benefit, at least in the near term. So what about the losers lost here? Well, obviously, OpenAI and its employees, its investors and board of directors, they were staring at a $90 billion valuation that they just threw away. That asset is going to get marked down. There's little question about it. Its, it's customers are, are, are caught in the, the crossfire as well. I mean, the whole argument around accelerating AI and let the tech industry adjudicate trust and AI safety, the whole argument just got torpedoed. And despite the diving catch in the end zone by Satya Nadella, Microsoft can't be happy with the situation. Everyone is saying they're a big winner, with some exceptions. <laughs> Matthew Prince, for instance. But so how so? How is Microsoft the big winner here? They were the AI puppet master coming out of Ignite, and now they're trying to put Humpty Dumpty back together. Look, what happens if Sam Altman gets lured back to open AI? Is it all suddenly good? They didn't lose any productivity? They didn't lose any sleep over this? They didn't have to slow down and put controls in place and, and restructure their, their deal somehow with open AI? That's not going to slow them down. And what if Sam Altman does end up at Microsoft? How many of those open AI employees go with him versus going to Apple? or Amazon, or Tesla, or Google. And how, does, how long does it take for Microsoft to ramp up? Is the latter scenario better? Or is the former scenario better? It's really hard to say. So let's take a look at some of the customer comments. These just came in, ETR, you know, real-time research here. Uh, and so they're anecdotal comments, but ETR snapped into action to capture some sentiment so that we could report today. The assessment, overall is that Microsoft is embedded deeply into many customers and their processes, and many are going to give them a pass. But there is definite cause for concern in the data. Let me read some of the verbatims from several IT decision makers, including senior directors of, of architecture, a senior director of IT, a cybersecurity practitioner. All these were from large organizations within financial services and the insurance industry, and one large nonprofit, kind of ironic. Quote, open AI is dead from my point of view. Three CEOs in three days isn't good. It isn't a good signal. And Microsoft is taking advantage of that. True. Next quote. Having proper governance and controls and security is very critical to our business and we are partnering with Microsoft for successful solutions. Okay, so that's one that's gonna give Microsoft a pass evidently. Next quote. I think the lack of transparency from OpenAI around the decision clouds my confidence in either side, meaning both Microsoft and OpenAI. Next quote, quote, this news makes me skeptical of both OpenAI and Microsoft, and the easiest solution might be to just avoid both in lieu of other platforms until things settle down or truth, the truth behind the rapid changes is clarified. Next quote, it adds to the overall skepticism around AI and related risks. I believe it will raise awareness throughout the tech and government and inevitably lead to more attempts to regulate the platforms. This quote, next quote, this basically means we need to hedge against multiple, this just came in before we recorded from a CTO. This basically means we need to hedge against multiple companies. We are using both OpenAI and Google extensively as well as startups. There is no clear winner yet. And the space is evolving too quickly to bet the farm on one player. This last point underscores, you know, not only the failure of OpenAI 
the failure of its governance. Uh, actually, I'm referring to the previous point, literally, we just inserted the last point. So the penultimate point, the one before the last, underscores the, the failure of OpenAI's governance, and, but it also affects the entire technology and, and, and ecosystem in a way that could stifle innovation. Look, at policymakers who want to regulate AI now have a much stronger hand to play. So where do we go from here? Why did this all happen? Emmett Shear, the interim CEO from Twitch, tweeted when he accepted the job that he had good visibility on the whole situation and there was nothing amiss regarding Sam Altman. No big deal. Now he's saying he's not going to stay on until he finds out exactly why the board removed him. And you know, Sam Altman's supposedly coming back. I mean, it's just a mess. Over the weekend, evidently, the, the board of directors tried to, to, uh, to hire the Anthropic CEO and offered to merge companies. Anthropic said, no way. So which is it? I mean, is, <laughs> is, is there clarity as to what happened or not? It, it's very unclear, obviously. OpenAI's valuation just got crushed, possibly cut in half or worse. It was definitely not 90 billion anymore. And our initial data shows that customers are hitting the pause button as we just shared and questioning a lot of things right now, at least most customers, I wouldn't say all customers, to try to understand where they might have blind spots. This is a huge we told you so moment for the AI hall monitors and the decelerators and the bureaucrats, which is not ideal from an innovation standpoint. It's a massive black eye on the tech industry in terms of being able to self-govern. Now, let's face it, tech doesn't have the same lobbying skills as banks. And finally, the very bottom line that this brings into focus is, as we've been saying since early in the cycle, there will not be one large language model to rule them all choice and flexibility is going to be the operative model. And that is one thing we're pretty certain about in this whole crazy world of uncertain Gen AI. Okay, that's it for now. SuperCloud 5, the battle for AI supremacy kicks off next week. How timely was this, <laughs> was this drama? That's going to be live from our Palo Alto studio. John Furrier and I are going to be in Las Vegas reporting for reInvent. Lisa Martin and Savannah Peterson are going to be in studio in our Palo Alto studio. And Rob Streche with Rebecca Knight are going to re be reporting live from Barcelona at HPE Discover. Our coverage starts Tuesday the 28th, so check that out at thecube.net. I want to thank Alex Myerson and Ken Schiffman who are on production and they handle our podcast. Kristen Martin and Cheryl Knight help get the word out on social media and in our newsletters. And Rob Hof is our EIC. He's over at siliconangle.com, does some great editing. Thank you all. Remember, all these episodes are available as podcasts. Wherever you listen, just search Breaking Analysis Podcast. Thank you for subscribing. I publish each week on wikibon.com and siliconangle.com. You can email me at david.vellante at siliconangle.com or DM me at dvellante or comment on our LinkedIn posts. And please do check out etr.ai. Not only do they have the best survey data in the business, they're about real-time uh, uh, data. They've got a great practitioner community who loves to share ideas. Uh, obviously, it's anonymous, uh, but... The, the data is just incredible. And can't thank ETR enough and really appreciate the partnership. This is Dave Vellante with the Cure Research Insights powered by ETR. Thanks for watching, everybody, and we'll see you next time at Breaking Analysis.